All right, how about we get started? Um, so first, thank you very much for uh, joining this session uh, today. Um, this has uh, been a really great series so far, so I'm really excited to be a part of it all. Um, today, we're here to talk about total product security lifecycle management in the context of product security, right? Um, so really, uh, just wanted to introduce myself uh, briefly. Um, my name is Sean Barry. I'm in business development here at Cybellum. Cybellum is a product security platform that enables the security of connected devices. We'll talk more on that later. Uh, for my role here, I work at the intersection of product security and lifecycle management. Before Cybellum, um, I did a brief stint at an analytics startup, but uh, most notably prior to that, I worked seven years at Siemens Digital Industry Software on the medical device team, where I worked uh, quite a bit with Polarian. So um, I'm really excited to be back working in the product lifecycle space. And through today's presentation, uh, you'll see why. Otherwise, um, uh, just a little bit more about me. I live uh, right outside of Philadelphia. Uh, it's really exciting to live here right now. The Eagles are doing really well. Um, hopefully, we'll make it to the Super Bowl. Uh, but otherwise, you know, I love to travel and uh, spend time outdoors. And um, speaking of travel and uh, you know spending time outdoors, I'm actually going camping here, believe it or not, uh, in the next couple hours. And I'll be taking our, our family's uh, RAV4. Um, so to kind of kick things off, I'd like to pose a question to the audience. You know, what are the fundamental differences between these two cars? On the left-hand side, you have my 2018 RAV4. And then the right-hand side, the most uh, recently available uh, 2022 uh, RAV4. So besides uh, 60,000 miles and a clean floorboard, um, the key differences are 13 new additional systems. Um, and with these new systems comes an additional 28 million lines of code from countless new software libraries. So if you guess more software, or even more systems, uh, you're right. And um, basically, you know, during the last four years, requirements for uh, the RAV4 have evolved to meet today's market and safety needs. It's now turned into a hybrid electric vehicle with driver assistance, uh, more infotainment, uh, with uh, more device integrations. The key is there's more and more and more of everything and software is underpinning all of this. Uh, someone said that we're basically driving computers and we know that uh, pretty soon, you know, uh, you know, these computers that we're driving are going to be driving us. And I, and I really like this because I, I think it's a, a great everyday example of a now decade old quote from Mark Andreessen, which is, you know, software is eating the world. Um, so whether it's, you know, electric autonomous vehicles or the next generation of smart ventilators, software is underpinning innovation all around us. And amid this, you know, all you can eat software buffet, we seldom stop to ask, you know, what's actually in this software? So suddenly we're evaluating the software supply chain and what makes software great, you know, it's malleability, it's reuse is also, it turns out it's Achilles heel. And recent uh, vulnerabilities like Log4j have really exposed this. And so, you know, really the innovation um, of tomorrow and all around us today, it, it relies on the security of these products. And this ultimately explains the emergence of product security as a do domain of cybersecurity and why regulatory bodies are now acting. And I know this has been uh, well covered this week, so I'll just kind of tackle it high level um, and really focus on what regulations mean to the OEM uh, for both automotive and medical device. Um, so in short, we're, we're pretty much past two in automotive where WP29 spells out the need for a programmatic effort in tackling cybersecurity from design all the way through uh, post-production. While strong guidelines uh, previously existed in medical device, um, now with the recent omnibus bill here in the United States, uh, the clock is now ticking. Uh, there's a due date now, March 29th, uh, which was 90 days from the omnibus bill passing. Uh, where essentially medical device manufacturers, you know, need to have a plan to, uh, you know, monitor and fix uh, cybersecurity vulnerabilities, um, and then also include software bill of materials as part of their submission process moving forward. Um, there's quite a bit of similarity between these regulations, uh, which is no surprise nor coincidence. Uh, both industries firmly have OEMs in their crosshairs, and the regulatory intent here is leading to life cycle management concepts. So um, essentially OEMs are expected to fully know what's in all of their products, entire software supply chain. 
and then be able to use this information to continuously monitor and mitigate vulnerabilities and, of course, be able to prove it all at the end of the day um, as part of the submission process or even in the midst of an audit. Again, for those with a lifecycle management background, which I presume is most people here today, um, this reads a lot like how functional safety is treated. And um, essentially that's because security is essentially safety. So um, that's just, um, you know, kind of buttons it all up for you there. So um, this presents an immediate challenge um, for OEMs because um, first and foremost, um, they don't always have, and, and they actually rarely ever have full access to the source code in their supply chain. Um, even internally, this is a challenge within uh, a particular company, right? Um, remember our, the car from earlier? Not my car, but the nice one. Um, suppliers of, for example, the infotainment system or one of the hundreds of ECUs simply just won't provide the source code to their products. There's no regulation that says they have to, and there's no compelling event either to go along with it. So in reality, OEMs have to tackle SBOM management, the core use case uh, around product security, um, all on their own and working with what they have. So let that sink in. Um, and, and, you know, what they have is really a mix of, um, you know, some SBOMs in either S, uh, Cyclone DX or SPDX format, uh, or, um, you know, mostly largely binary files with maybe some source code. And, and all of this is in varying degrees of quality. And, um, and, you know, essentially, uh, the key issue here is being able to aggregate multiple data formats of, you know, this varying quality and then structuring it. Uh, and this is key to supporting the workflow behind uh, total product security lifecycle management. And then, of course, there's additional systems like Polarian, for example, um, ALM, and it's orchestrating a software development lifecycle, uh, which is inclusive of, you know, develop development operations platforms like, you know, Jenkins or GitHub or Jira and whatnot. Uh, and they all have contextualization too to provide to this story. So, um, you know, as a side antidote, and while I wasn't alive for any of this, um, you know, product security does remind me of, you know, the early days of, of CAD and PLM, you know, where there was multiple different file formats, multiple systems, all sorts of unstructured, but really important critical data to, you know, products and, and really the need for connectivity and contextualization to support the product's journey from sunrise to sunset. Uh, fundamentally, it's all the same and, and, you know, we're establishing essentially through all this effort, um, a digital twin for every product model version year, uh, because it's really ultimately as much of a scale problem as it is I mean, a data quality problem. So, uh, with that, what I'd like to do is kind of flip into a demo really quickly and, uh, just show you a, a little bit of the end to end nature of what, uh, things look like, um, from a holistic perspective on a Cybellum platform. So. Um, we're going to start with, you know, an executive kind of view, um, at the 30,000 foot level, think chief product security officer, uh, and then we'll jump into the other side of the spectrum, um, where the sausage is made at the security analyst perspective. So, um, when it comes to total product security, lifecycle management, that's mouthful. Um, it entails the entire enterprise. Everything has to be covered. So here we're looking at, you know, a medical device organization, for example, um, and it represents the structure of the business where you have, um, you know, three or four different platforms um, or divisions, and um, you have business units therein with, um, you know, lines of products and whatnot. Um, and essentially, this gives a roll up of the entire SBOM management um, of an entire organization, be able to look at it and see the digital hygiene of how the actual process is happening from start to finish. So. Um, we have, you know, maybe seven different operating companies, um, and we have 140 um, targeted digital twins or and S bombs um, that we're looking to um, actualize within this process. And and so far we have eight that are approved, and there's one in progress. And um, but basically this gives an idea of you know the life cycle at a high level where you're trying to cover an entire portfolio of products and how it, this entire process is, is flowing on a continual basis. So um, it gives decision makers an ability to have a compliance roadmap and also understand if there's any sort of critical vulnerabilities um, today. And so it can easily scale up from, you know, you know just a couple of dozen, um, you know, products that you might get when to get started with all the way through, you know, thousands and thousands of products. Because that's really ultimately the kind of the scale problem that we were talking about earlier um, in helping kind of assess a, a cyber digital hy hygiene at a high level.
So um, this is, again, just like a high level uh, dashboard uh, that would be used uh, from a chief product security officer or someone in that kind of realm of things that is managing entire team, entire process at a, or initiative. Um, but let's go ahead and jump down into, you know, again, as I referred to it earlier, you know, a, maybe the 10,000 foot level, but, you know, where kind of this, the rubber hits the road for, um, you know, product security workflows at the analyst level. Um, so uh, everything here maps to the workflow of managing an SBOM, um, and then, of course, taking it to um, and tying it to vulnerabilities that are ongoing and producing artifacts to support compliance. So um, you, right away, you'll see that there's actually more modules here on the left hand side. Uh, that's because, you know, a product security analyst workflow is uh, much more wide encompassing. Um, we're just going to spend time and and kind of just assessing the kind of core components as I had talked about. So um, um, we'll jump into just this first component here within the platform and you can already see some high level, um, you know, meta information an overview of a, a particular controller as part of an overall system concept. Um, really quickly, I just want to kind of handle how we ingest um, data at Cybellum into the platform. Um, there's a couple of different ways. Uh, so we, we, we take in you know, the common formats as we, we talked about on, on one of the previous slides. So Cyclone DX, SPDX, uh, binary files as well. Uh, and then even like manual uh, um, you know, inputs as well and CSV and Excel uh, to go along with it. So there's a wide kind of format of all the different data that can come in because it, it really does uh, come in like that. Um, and then, of course, uh, we have our integrations with Polarian and these other DevOps tools that um, kind of brought to attention earlier. And we're able to, um, you know, automate and just from those uh, systems as well to populate, um, you know, components and, and all the different kinds of um, architecture you would have within Cybellum. Um, so we've looked at this um, kind of overview uh, a bit here, but this is kind of all the kind of metadata and high level information on hardware and software. Um, here we'll jump into actually an overview of the software bill of materials. So, um, you know, as a product security analyst, part of my job is to ensure the SBOM is accurate. And because um, again, at the end of the day, everything is predicated off of this. So here we can see this uh, software bill of materials where there's 53 packages therein. Uh, we can open up any one of these and drill down into it, see the package details, you know, what version it is, the latest um, version uh, date. Um, you know, is it end of life maybe, or is it, is it marked for end of service? Um, any sort of kind of license information attached to it, file path, that sort of thing. Um, and then of course, you know, as part of my job, it's also to kind of ensure data integrity. So um, we have the ability to, to, you know, manually edit some of these automatically populated um, fields and, and maybe mark something like end of service, for example, uh, maybe it's this Saturday, right? Um, but either way you can save it. Um, and this all kind of is, is registered and, and, and collected on the back end. Um, one other thing I'd like to mention, and uh, I guess I don't necessarily have it in, in this particular component, but um, I love to talk about it, it's uh, versioning. This is also part of it, because if you think about SBOM management, the life cycle of a, a software build materials is really important. So being able to um, you know, see the evolution from version to version is, is paramount to being able to uh, you know, understand you know, the story of these particular assets at a granular level, but then also in, in summary, uh, and then also kind of assess, you know, how healthy your um, product security function is, is uh, performing as well. Um, so that's, uh, you know, also an interesting um, way to think about things in terms of versioning, because that's also where Polarian comes in at the end of the day, is being able to version and provide some of these artifacts um, as part of the submission process for, you know, either automotive or medical device. So. Um, so yeah, we, we talked a little bit about uh, software build materials here. Uh, now I want to jump over to one of the next you know core use cases, which is you know the continuous uh, monitoring of your your cyber digital twin now versus you know the vulnerabilities of today. So here we have um, just uh, our, our kind of our high level assessments, and if we kind of jump into the assessment model here, we can see um, an overview of the. Um, essentially the, the vulnerabilities and, you know, what's outstanding and what's been resolved uh, for this particular, you know, controller that we've been talking about on this call. Um, so um, you can see kind of, again, like at a high level view of um, information, uh, be able to kind of um, glean some things here. But if you want to really drill down into vulnerabilities, um, we have the ability to do that as well. So um, I guess 
one thing to kind of note here is, um, you know, if we would have loaded this asset like net new to Cybellum, there would have been, you know, uh, over a thousand of uh, unresolved um, vulnerabilities against this. Um, and we still have a good chunk that are still unresolved. There's almost 400 here. Um, and um, essentially what you can do with this information is um, be able to um, drill into uh, each individual vulnerability. So there's a new one from January 9th, just a couple of weeks ago. And, and kind of see what the description is, you know, what it applies to. Um, if you want, you can jump to the actual full uh, report on the NIST website, which is one of the databases that we tie to. Um, and as part of this workflow, you can actually create a ticket. So this is kind of the end-to-end, -end, you know, closed loop kind of workflow that we support. Um, but, you know, basically a product security analysis here to triage and prioritize what needs to be fixed. And we can actually um, create a ticket that be pushed over to, to JIRA um, for, you know, maybe a new bug here that needs to be, um, be sent. And you can even see some additional information that's sent to, you know, the software development team to be able to, um, close the loop on this, um, and mitigate this vulnerability and then push an, an update to, um, the platform. So I'm not going to hit create ticket, but you get the, the gist of it. Um, so that's, uh, one way where we, um, help close the loop with software development. But then, of course, you can also um, be able to, as a security analyst, come in and actually accept risk or, or um, at least provide some, you know, context to if it's been acknowledged, is it being worked on, is it, you know, um, this is something that we're just going to accept risk-wise and, and move on with. And that's where, you, again, you have this kind of, like, sign-off and everything kind of happening on the background, which could be part of uh, an overall submission. Um, one other thing to mention here, too, is... Um, because there's you know quite a lot of vulnerabilities that can exist for every single component here is we have actually the ability to automatically um, filter out a number of these um, and actually just as I clicked into this is a new vulnerability was um, applied against our software middle of materials here but um, I don't know if you caught that but um, essentially you can um, automatically um, filter out vulnerabilities that um, don't necessarily apply to this component. So uh, if we ran this, you could actually automate a lot of the uh, the manual rote work that goes into um, you know the product security analyst workflow, and this saves a ton of time. But also um, make sure that there's no actual manual errors because at the end of the day, we're people, and so um, you know things can go awry. Um, so that's kind of just a high level fly through of our assessments and, and the ability to kind of um, take a, a software bill of materials, um, bring it to life, and then of course, you know, tie it back to, you know, the ongoing vulnerability databases that are updated in real time. Um, I did want to spend um, just a, a minute on uh, the other big piece, which is actually compliance. So since we're in a medical device environment here, um, we have some standardized templates that check against some of the um, publicized requirements um, that the FDA puts out, for example. So here we can take some of the draft guidance um, from the FDA around software build materials. Uh, we could um, generate a report out of this, um, and we can create a, essentially an SBOM from our uh, particular component here. Here's our, our 700 controller. And uh, we can actually download this report. And actually, just for the sake of time, it takes like a couple of seconds to, to chug through, but I'll just kind of show you what an a PDF uh, extract in this case looks like um, coming out of Cybellum. So here uh, we have the high level kind of information as you saw on that um, vulnerabilities page with also some of the software high level heuristics, you know, uh, an overview of the licenses and whatnot. And then you can actually get into the, the line items of the software build materials. So if you think about the workflow, this is kind of it coming um, to a bookend where um, this is an artifact that could be pushed to um, as an as part of an automated workflow to Polarian, so um, and there has it. You can see it kind of chugged it all out, but um, yeah. So that's um, it from a high level perspective. Um, and I'm just trying to keep an eye on the time here. I'm, I'm running up a little bit at the end, um, but um, you know, I, just to kind of land the plane here. Um, I really liked what um, JF had said on Tuesday's Player Next presentation, where cybersecurity is is never over, and I think that's a really good way to kind of summarize things. And, and really, it also um, helps um, reiterate what's underlying and as part of this partnership between Player and, and um, Cybellum, because uh, our joint value proposition really matches well to the always live aspect of cybersecurity. So, you know, to, um, we we align basically what. Player is orchestrating from a software development lifecycle perspective, you know, this entire 
application uh, lifecycle management and you know the the creation of release systems therein, and we we pick up that story uh, and bring it into Cybellum. Um, and in this context, we tackle the cybersecurity requirements of the day. So um, creating a, a fully contextualized software bill of materials, um, you know, matching requirements with vulnerabilities, and as you saw, automatically assessing them, and then of course creating you know. Uh, the proof, um, the artifacts to be able to submit, you know, whether it's submissions around 510Ks or pre and post market surveillance and medical device or uh, WP29. And, and this ultimately um, reflects an end to end approach for product and security teams to basically align over and, and tackle this, you know, always live concept. So um, that's um, really the joint value proposition, why I'm most excited to be back in this space. And uh, seeing, seeing that it's a hockey season, I, I figured we could um, kind of end things with a, a Wayne Gretzky quote. So, you know, Wayne Gretzky says, you know, I skate to where the puck is going to be, not where it has been. And so if you agree that product security will continue to align with existing lifecycle management concepts, um, then Wayne Gretzky would suggest that you skate to where the puck is going. And, and really the bedrock of all of this is ensuring you have interoperability to be able to tackle that skill problem and also um, compliance um, in your crosshairs and be able to take advantage of some of the automated tools that are out there to kind of streamline things and and make the product security workflow easier. Um, and then as we transition to Q&A here, um, I'll just leave this up for half a minute because I have to actually stop sharing my screen to see some of the questions. But um, essentially, uh, I wanted to invite everyone to um, subscribe to our podcast, Left to Our Own Devices. Um, we foster a product agnostic discussion around, um, you know, product security with key industry leaders. Um, and actually, here's uh, the quote here from uh, the chairwoman, uh, Dr. Suzanne Schwartz, who runs the FDA product security program, where she talks about, you know, software build materials and, and really actually holding uh, the manufacturers at the end of the day accountable to, you know, knowing what's all in their um, products, um, soup to nuts. So, um, yeah, there you have it. Um, so I'll actually try and put a link to this in, uh, the chat as I'll have to um, stop sharing my screen to be able to field some of the questions, but, um, yeah, really appreciate everyone, uh, taking the time to uh, attend the, uh, the session today. So, um, yeah, let's see. Let's see where the questions are at. Sorry. Let me just find that really quick. Here we go, found the chat. Sorry about that. So one of the questions was, what are Cybellum's plans to focus on an industry solution for aerospace regulations? Uh, that's a really great question. So right now we're working with a couple of, of aerospace companies to um, understand that and how they're uh, approaching product security. And then meanwhile, we're also uh, working across some of the, like the regulatory uh, groups that we actually are, are part of the, the organizing bodies on to um, help kind of translate and templatize ultimately these regulations and be able to kind of create a templated solution where you do have, like you saw earlier, that FDA um, extract, if you will, um, to be able to, um, you know, take a, uh, you know, a software build materials around, you know, aerospace components and be able to um, create like either machine readable extract or like a PDF extract uh, that could be used to um, tackle the, you know, the aerospace regulations and whatnot. Uh, and this is also a part where we look to kind of partner with, um, as I mentioned, like customers and some of the industry leading bodies um, or, or, or professionals, because um, ultimately this is um, very much evolving still, as most people would, would tell you and, and when it comes to product security. Um, you know, I think that, you know, when it comes to like some of the, the industries we talked about today, like medical device, um, they're surely uh, very much on their way. Um, and automotive too is, um, you know, it's it's been kind of going on for the last six or seven years where they they have been tackling like software build materials, but now it's kind of evolving because is really the threat landscape itself is evolving. So um, I think we'll see more and more of that in, in aerospace and even some of the consumer product uh, verticals. And that's the last question that I could see in the chat here. Um, let me do one quick thing. I'll I'll throw in the chat our 
podcast. Just uh, the link. Um, and we're on all the, the various mediums for digesting podcasts, whether that's, you know, Spotify or Apple. Um, so uh, we just would invite you to join us uh, there if you were interested in learning more about product security. And um, feel free to reach out to us if you would love to um, start a discussion around it. I think that's it for today. Thank you very much. And um, yeah, have a great weekend. Mm -hmm.